Hello everyone, I'm Isaac and welcome back to my channel. Sorry I haven't been very active lately, but my appendix decided to go on strike, so I had to cut it out because this union has no room for slackers. In any case, a few weeks ago I came across this article on Facebook entitled, I'm a pediatrician, here's what I did when a little boy told me he was a girl. Which quite honestly just screams, look, an expert who shares our bigoted views. Now this article is from the website LifeSite, a Christian news site, which as you can imagine is filled with bigoted articles like this one. So without further ado, let's begin. Congratulations, it's a boy. Or congratulations, it's a girl. As a pediatrician for nearly 20 years, that's how many of my patient relationships began. Our bodies declare our sex. Biological sex is not assigned. Sex is determined by conception by our DNA and is stamped into every cell of our bodies. Human sexuality is binary. You either have a normal Y chromosome and develop into a male, or you don't, and will develop into a female. There are at least 6,500 genetic differences between men and women. Hormones and surgery cannot change this. Well, first off, sexuality isn't the correct term here. Sexuality refers to someone's sexual attraction, and no, that does not exist on a binary, but a spectrum. Second, Nature Magazine, one of the most well-known and well-respected peer-reviewed science journals out there, recently published an article stating that it is entirely unscientific to determine someone's gender by their chromosomes. So no, you were just factually wrong here. And we've only barely begun. An identity is not biological, it is psychological. It has to do with thinking and feeling. Thoughts and feelings are not biologically hardwired. Our thinking and feeling may be factually right or factually wrong. First, I want to point out that thoughts and feelings are in fact biological in nature. That's kind of what the brain is for. And second, before you inevitably assert that being transgender is inherently harmful, I would just like to point out that Cambridge University has recently published a meta-study which clearly shows that transitioning improves the life quality of trans people. If I walk into my doctor's office today and say, Hi, I'm Margaret Thatcher. My physician will say I'm delusional and give me an antipsychotic. Yet, if instead I walked in and said, I'm a man, he would say, congratulations, you're transgender. Your doctor reacts differently to the two scenarios because they are not the same. In order for you to actually be Margaret Thatcher, you would have to have the memories, experiences, and personality of Margaret Thatcher, which isn't possible. However, it isn't entirely possible to be born with a brain that is far more similar to that of the opposite gender. And again, transitioning is the best choice for those people, as there has been plenty of scientific research into the topic, and psychologists, medical professionals, and scientists have put plenty of research into the topic and have found that transitioning is the best possible choice for those people. If I were to say, Doc, I'm suicidal because I'm an amputee trapped in a normal body, please cut off my leg. I will be diagnosed with body identity integrity disorder. But if I walk into a doctor's office and say, I'm a man, sign me up for a double mastectomy, my physician will. See, if you want to cut off a leg or an arm, you're mentally ill. But if you want to cut off healthy breasts or a pedis, you're transgender. Now, once again, you are conflating two things that aren't the same. According to the American Journal of Biomedics, quote, all psychiatrists who have investigated body integrity identity disorder, or BID, found that the amputation desire is either obsessive or based in monothematic delusion, end quote. Even the argument that amputation would be the only effective BID therapy does not hold. First, their success has not been proven scientifically, but only anecdotally. Second, at least sometimes the success is not substantial. Some amputated patients develop further amputation desires, end quote. This stands in sharp contrast to gender dysphoria, of which there has been plethora of research done, enough for Cambridge University to look at 56 of them which collectively span the entire transitioning process, as well as long-term follow-up, and concluded that transitioning was an effective treatment for gender dysphoria. Doctors are not differentiating gender dysphoria from everything else you mentioned arbitrarily, as you have implied. They are doing so based on a rational, scientific basis. No one is born transgender. If gender identity were hardwired into the brain before birth, identical twins would have the same gender identity 100% of the time, but they don't. Firstly, genetics do not control someone's gender identity. For example, one study researched neuroanatomical differences such as grain-white matter studies and steroid hormone genetics, as well as genes associated with sex hormone reproducers, and found a positive correlation with being transgender. Second, even if gender were controlled genetically, it would still be possible for identical twins to have two different gender identities, as identical twins can still present different phenotypes, as in some rare cases, identical twins can have different eye colors. I had one patient, we'll call Andy, between the ages of three and five. He increasingly played with girls and girls' toys, and said he was a girl. I referred the parents and Andy to a therapist. Sometimes mental illness of a parent or abuse of the child are factors, but more commonly, the child has misperceived family dynamics and internalized a false belief. Playing with girl toys is not a sign of abuse. I have no idea where the fuck you're getting that from. In the middle of one session, Andy put down the toy truck, held onto a Barbie, and said, Mommy and Daddy, you don't love me when I'm a boy. 
When Andy was three, his sister with special needs was born and required significantly more of his parents' attention. Andy must perceive this as mommy and daddy love girls. If I want them to love me, I have to be a girl. With family therapy, Andy got better. Today, Andy's parents would be told this is who Andy really is. You must ensure that everyone treats him as a girl, or else you will commit suicide. The example you have brought here is not an example of a transgender child. This is an example of a child who is showing gender non-conforming behavior due to a miscommunication with the family. You see, being transgender isn't in your behavior, but rather your identity. If Andy were referred to a gender or clinic, he would not be allowed to transition as doctors are very careful to make sure that only those whose identity does not match their assigned gender would be allowed to transition. In fact, children referred to gender clinics have a desistance rate of anywhere between 61 to 98 percent, according to some studies. This is because these studies use the DSM-IV's criteria for gender dysphoria, which meant that gender non-conforming behavior alone was enough to count them as part of the study, even though, again, being transgender is an identity, not a behavior. Thus, in Andy's case, specialists would not let Andy transition. And just as a side note, it's quite disgusting that you would throw out, you'd better do it or he'll kill himself, as if it isn't happening in reality, when that is exactly what's happening. As Andy approaches puberty, the experts put him on puberty blockers so we can continue to impersonate a girl. It doesn't matter that we've never tested puberty blockers on normal biological children. It doesn't matter that when blockers are used to treat prostate cancer in men and gynecological problems in women, they cause problems with memories. We don't need testing. We need to arrest his physical development now or he will kill himself. There's actually plenty of research on puberty blockers, specifically on those that are prescribed puberty blockers in order to transition. Research I literally found within five seconds of Googling, but I suppose I should have known that from the rest of this transphobic drivel throughout the article that I shouldn't have expected any actual research. But this is not true. Instead, when supported on their biological sex through natural puberty, the vast majority of gender-confused children get better. Yet, we chemically castrate gender-confused children with puberty blockers, and then we permanently sterilize many of them by adding cross-sex hormones, which also put them at risk for heart disease, stroke, diabetes, cancers, and even the very emotional problems that the gender experts claim to be treating. First, children displaying gender non-conforming behavior is not in and of itself a sign of trauma or mental illness. You really need to stop pathologizing any kind of behavior children display that falls outside of your strict gender binary. Second, children who desist are not being affirmed in their biological sex. Rather, the specialists carefully analyze the child's psychological state and evaluate whether or not the child is actually trans. Children desist because their gender variant behavior does not make the, a child trans. Identity does. The specialists know this and are able to tell the difference with some careful study of the child. And if we're talking strictly about trans people, that is what will likely happen if you don't allow your child to transition and don't accept them for who they are. The fact is, trans people do have a higher suicide rate, which is entirely because of gender dysphoria and cultural acceptance. As children who transition and are supported in their transition have the exact same suicide and anxiety rates as those who are not trans. Thus, what you're affording here is not only false, but could potentially put the life of young trans people in jeopardy. P.S. If a girl who insists she is male has been on testosterone daily for one year, she is cleared to get bilateral mastectomy at age 16. Mind you, the American Academy of Pediatrics came out with a report that urges pediatricians to caution teenagers about getting tattoos because they're essentially permanent and can cause scarring. But this same AAP is 110% supportive of a 16-year-old girl's getting double mastectomy, even without parental consent, so long as the girl insists she is a man, and has been taking testosterone daily for one year. Once again, this is because the science shows that transitioning improves the life quality of trans people, whereas no such research exists for getting tattoos. These two things are not the same. Stop equating them. To indoctrinate all children from preschool forward with a lie that they could be trapped in the wrong body disrupts the very foundation of a child's reality testing. If they can't trust the reality of their physical bodies, who or what can they trust? Transgender ideology in schools is psychological abuse and often leads to chemical castration, sterilization, and surgical mutilation. Except that assertion is contradicted by the fact that up to 98% of children referred to gender clinics end up desisting, and that all of the best scientific data shows that transitioning does in fact help trans people and significantly improves the long-term life quality of trans people. Anyway, that's the end of this article, and honestly, I hope this doctor never meets another child that has even a remote chance of being trans, as she would undoubtedly put her agenda above the health and safety of the child, as well as put the child through a lot of unnecessary trauma. And even if the child isn't trans but displays gender variant behavior, she would pathologize and basically tell the child that there's something wrong with them, when in fact there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. But at least it can't get much worse than- Mask comes off! The LGBT left is out to silence Christian voices! Oh well, fuck me! Special thanks to Jimmy Snow and Mr. Atheist for doing that bit at the end, as well as to everyone else who's supported this channel so far.
by the way, we're not. <laughs> we just want to be allowed to have our own voice for once. But you know, I mean, you know that, Isaac.